Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar, and today we're gonna work on Putnam 2001 number B2. And this is a problem involving a system of equations that are rational functions in X and Y. Uh, and it's an interesting set of polynomial equations that has a very non-standard solution. Uh, so the question asks to find all pairs of real numbers X, Y, such that one over X plus one over two Y is this expression here. And one over X minus one over two Y is this expression over here. All right, so let's label these equations one and two and just make an observation about these that suggests a way to start. So uh, you notice that we have a quantity plus another quantity and a quantity minus that other quantity. Um, so this suggests to possibly add and then also subtract these two equations to isolate each of the two constituents. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so we'll start with one plus two. If we do that, we'll get a two over x on the left-hand side, and on the right, we'll get the sum of these two things. So I'll actually expand these um, just to make things simpler. So we'll have a three x to the fourth here, and a minus two x to the fourth, which gives us an x to the fourth. And then the cross term here is 10 x squared y squared. Uh, and then we have a three y to the fourth plus the two y to the fourth, which gives us five y to the fourth. All right, let's do a similar thing and take one minus two. We'll get two copies of one over two y, which gives us one over y. And we'll have a similar thing, subtracting. We have a x, three x to the fourth. We're subtracting a negative two x to the fourth. That gives us five x to the fourth. Um, the cross term does not change. It's still 10 x squared y squared. Uh, and then we have a three y to the fourth minus two y to the fourth, which gives us a y to the fourth. And we might as well simplify things here a little bit more as well. We have these denominators with variables x and y. Why not turn this into two polynomial equations by multiplying this one by x and this one by y respectively? If we multiply this by x, we have a two here, and then we'll increase the exponent of x everywhere we see it on the right-hand side. So this becomes a five. Uh, this x here becomes a three instead of a two. And then here we introduce an x term, so we get x, y to the fourth. Okay, and in a similar light, we can multiply this by y. We'll get a one here. Um, we'll introduce a y term here. This becomes a y cubed. And we'll have a y to the fifth here. Okay, so we're left with two equations here, and it doesn't seem like we can really do anything interesting here at face value. Uh, but I do wanna make an observation about something. If you look at the two right-hand sides of the two equations, you notice you have the variable x with powers of it descending while y increases. So you have x to the fifth and x to the fourth y, x cubed y squared, x squared y cubed, x y to the fourth, y to the fifth. Okay, well this is interesting. Uh, this looks like some kind of binomial expansion. In fact, if you added these two things, you'd get exactly the binomial expansion of x plus y to the five. And the way you can recognize this is maybe if you're familiar with Pascal's triangle, you notice these numbers come from it. Um, if we start with a one, Pascal's triangle is obtained by successively placing ones at the ends of a triangle and any term being the sum of the two previous terms before it. So here we'll have one, three, three, one, one, four, six, four, one, and then the next line will be one, five, 10, 10, five, one. Which tells us by the binomial theorem that the sum of these two things is actually x plus y to the fifth. Okay, that's fantastic. So if we add these two subsequent equations, we at least get that three is the quantity x plus y to the fifth. Um, all right, doesn't seem like enough information to figure out what x and y are. Aha, uh -huh. but you notice that the terms here are alternating in the degree of x and similarly the degree of y. So if instead we change this to a negative, 
The expansion here would, have, would be x to the fifth minus this quantity plus this quantity minus this quantity plus this quantity minus this quantity. And the way to see that is you can treat this as x plus negative y to the fifth. If the expansion of x plus y to the fifth is the sum of these two, then the expansion of x plus negative y to the fifth is obtained by replacing y with negative y. And if we do that, we'd have a minus here, a minus here, and a minus here because we have odd powers of y, whereas we'd have pluses all over here. So if we subtract these two equations, we get one is x minus y to the fifth. Now the function t to the fifth is an increasing one. So this thing is gonna have one real solution, which is the fifth root of three. So the fifth root of three has to be x plus y. And similarly, the fifth root of one, which is one, has to be x minus y. And that gives us that if we add these two equations, x is the fifth root of three plus one over two, and y is the fifth root of three minus one over two. So interesting, what do we learn from this problem? I think the key thing to learn is, first of all, when you have a problem like this where it kind of suggests to add and subtract equations, do that. Simplify your life afterward by getting rid of rational expressions, but then this is a point here where it's really easy to get stuck. But once you notice something going on with the right-hand side that looks potentially familiar, like noticing that the numbers come from Pascal's triangle, noticing that the degrees of x uh, decrease as we alternate from term to term, you might be able to ex look at that and extend to figure out that it comes from a binomial theorem-like thing. And that'll get you to the part of the solution that gets you almost all the way there. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click the like button. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications on future videos.